What family secret or hidden backstory were you finally let in on when you were old enough? Story 1. When I was young, I thought it was really nice that my Nana lived with my aunt and her family since she was getting on a bit, and it meant she was looked after, and there were always people around. Aunt has six kids. Occasionally, Aunt would gripe about being the one looking after Nana, since Aunt is also one of many kids and being young. I sympathize, but given they all spent loads of time with Nana too, didn't think it was a big deal. You don't think about financial responsibility when you're young, I think, just social and caring. Well, it turns out the reason Nana lives with Aunt is because Aunt and her husband convinced Nana to put the house in their name so they could look after her affairs and sold it out from under her and invested the money in a pyramid scheme. So it's gone now. Because of this, her siblings refuse to give Aunt a penny towards looking after Nana since it's her fault Nana has no money or assets and instead pay to take Nana out all the time, meals, shopping, activities so she doesn't go without. But they let Aunt struggle under the weight of Nana's general living expenses. Aunt's kids are all independent now so they are not going to be impacted by money problems. Now I look back at her griping with annoyance and think what a terrible person she is. Story 2. My grandpa used to call women he knew from his church and give them the heavy breath treatment. He and my nan were quietly asked to leave town before the police were involved. Before I found out, I did wonder why they sold their house so cheap and moved towns at 60 years old. Story 3. This was in rural Canada in the 1930s. My relative had a girlfriend named Dulcie and he was slow to propose. Since nobody locked their door then, she let herself in while he was out one night, pulled up the shades, took her clothes off, turned the lights on, and let the neighbors see her walking around his house naked. After that, he was forced to marry her. And that is why nobody in the family liked Dulcie. Story 4. When I was 13, my dad told me that he'd had a child with his first wife, but my half-brother drowned in a swimming pool when he was three. Only time I ever saw my dad cry. I have an uncle who retired and dropped out of most contact with the family about 25 years ago. When I was in my 20s, my mom told me she keeps one eye open with my uncle, my dad's older brother and that she knows something having to do with him and my little brother, that if my dad knew about it, he would get on a plane, fly halfway across the country, and murder him on the spot. She passed away before I could ask her more about that, but the implication has haunted me for years. Story 5. One of my cousins had a baby when she was 17. My aunt and uncle sent her out of state to a hospital where she gave him up for adoption. Years later, after he would have turned 18, my uncle started looking and finally found him years later. He was doing well had a family of his own. My uncle didn't contact him and only told my aunt and my mom that the boy was fine. They decided that my cousin did not need to know where he was, and she died not knowing what had become of him. I have no idea if any of her siblings ever knew she had given up a child in her youth. If they did, they never said anything. The only reason I know is when I was going over my mom's will, I noticed she had this cousin listed to be my guardian if anything happened to her before I turned 18. I asked her why that cousin and that's when the story came out. Story 6. I didn't realize that my mom wasn't ever married to my father when she had my sister and I. I knew he had another family, a wife and kids. I guess my kid mind just never thought too deep about it and figured at some point years ago him and my mom were officially together, but they never were. She told me over the phone in my junior year of college. It's so weird the way the universe works sometimes to know that if my mom hadn't made an immoral choice, having a years-old relationship with a married man, and if he hadn't made an immoral choice to cheat on his wife, that neither me or my sister would exist, that their two wrongs brought us to life. Story 7. I have a niece I didn't know about until I was middle-aged. My oldest sister left home early while I was an oblivious child. Turned out she'd gotten pregnant as a young teen and went to live with our grandmother to gestate, give birth, and give the baby up for adoption. For decades I never knew, until my sister called during my divorce years later and commented that she knew what it was like to have your life upended because of her daughter. What? She'd never had any other kids, so I realized I was really missing something. Turned out she thought mom had eventually told me once I was an adult. And mom thought she had eventually told me, so they both assumed I knew when I had no idea. A few years later, her daughter finally reached out from the info on file at the agency. So now she's part of the extended family and my sister is bonus mom. They're both lucky the reunion went well. Story 8. My grandma was single in her 30s and sleeping with a married man. She ended up getting pregnant, and towards the end of her pregnancy, met my step-grandpa. They got married and put his name on the birth certificate, and my aunt has always believed he is her biological dad. Still to this day does, she's 50, while literally every other person in the family knows the truth. My mom has like 10 siblings, so the sheer number of people who know the truth and have managed to never tell her is quite impressive. I've known since I was like 8, 
Not sure why they trusted a child with that secret, but I never told. Story 9. When I was 26, my grandfather had a heart attack and passed away a few hours later without waking up. In all the family drama, it came out that he wasn't my blood grandfather. He adopted my mother and aunt when they were very young after he got back from Korea. It never changed how I felt about him. He was my grandfather, and a few cells doesn't change the fact that he loved me and I loved him. It's been just as long without him as with him, and I still miss him and hope to one day be half as good as him. Story 10. I don't know if old enough is the right phrase, but after my mother and my grandparents fell out, she told me about how my grandfather has been caught stealing things from shops and how he's had affairs. This is part of a general trend where, when she's trying to turn you against someone over one particular issue, she'll let you know about other bad things about the person that aren't strictly relevant. Feels quite manipulative, TBH. Story 11. When I was a kid, I went to the science day camp for a few weeks. We did different things with a few teachers and volunteers, but there was one teacher's assistant who really stuck out to me. We hit it off immediately and had a blast together every day. During pickup time, the teacher joked to my dad about how her TA and I acted like siblings. I remember my dad being really spacey for the rest of the day, even the week after that. Turns out the TA and I actually are half-siblings, with the same father. My, our dad, sat me down a few years later and explained that when he was 18, 19, he accidentally got his girlfriend pregnant. Both of them were devout Catholics, so she carried the child to term and abandoned her daughter afterwards. With no other options, he gave his daughter up for adoption. I haven't seen my sister since. Part of me wants to reach out because I have that information, but I'm also a bit nervous since we're both adults with our own sovereign lives now, not to mention the approximately 16-year age gap. Story 12. I always knew I was adopted. I was 10 when it happened. But I got all my files from my adoptive mom when I turned 21, and it shed much light. IDK how, maybe because it was the 90s and HIPAA laws were less strict. But I ended up with my birth father's confidential therapist notes from his counseling sessions. I always wondered why he was so angry. But the details of abuse, neglect, and his internal struggle with being gay in a world that would never accept him changed so much of how I see him. I wish so badly that even if he lost all his kids, that he wouldn't have Ed himself and would have made it to today. Who knows who he would be and what happiness he could have found and how his anger could have transformed. I feel guilty for reading those files too, but I didn't know what they were until I read them. So many complex feelings from this one stack of papers. Story 13. I found out that my dad on my birth certificate really isn't my biological father about seven months ago. My biological mother refuses to tell me who he is. I don't know why her and my fake father could have lied for that long. He has called me his daughter my whole life. I was adopted at birth, but have known my biological family my whole life. I'm 26, and I just want to know medical history. I'm so angry and hurt. Story 14. My mom dated a guy who was abusive right before she met my dad, and I'm pretty sure she had an abortion when she left him. She's a devout Catholic, but I can see her making that decision if she felt she had no other options. She softened her position on one issue of abortion in an otherwise very conservative worldview, and she definitely blames herself for her fertility issues later in life. I wish I could tell her that it's okay, and she did what she had to do at the time to survive, but I think she'd rather take it to her grave. Story 15. It wasn't the secret hidden from me. It was the secret I kept until my kids were old enough to understand the gravity of the situation. When asked where daddy went, I always said he got in trouble. He's an adult timeout. I figured it was the age-appropriate truth. I have since divorced, remarried a truly amazing man, could not be happier. My ex is still in prison. That poor girl is still just as gone. Story 16. One of my aunts told me I was named after one of my dad's ex-girlfriends because my mom planned to give me a very ugly name he hated. So, he filled out my birth certificate while she was still out from the general anesthesia she had from me being born C-section. I'm very grateful to dad, lol. She spent the rest of her life mad about my name, but at least I can say she didn't know where he got it. It was moderately popular back then. P.S. I don't know when or if they stopped using general anesthesia for births, but glad mom was both okay and not awake to name me afterward. Story 17. That my sister was biologically my half-sister, and my dad started dating my mom while she was already pregnant. Didn't tell us because they were worried we'd treat her differently. I've always thought of it as a pretty wonderful thing. My parents had their problems, but they always loved us and each other. Not everyone can claim the same. Story 18 I learned about when I was older was that my aunt had actually given up a child for adoption many years ago because her husband was highly incorporated with drugs and guns. The family kept it quiet because it was a time when such things were heavily stigmatized. I found out when I overheard my mom talking about it during a family gathering. It changed my perspective on my aunt 
and made me realize how much she had gone through. Story 19. Uncle Jim hung himself from the apple tree in his backyard. That generation was very dramatic and had multiple issues, extramarital lovers and children, etc. We are tame compared to them. Other side of the family, Aunt Anne married Uncle Aubrey. He was a preacher and a cheater. They were close with Jim and Tammy Faye Baker. Story 20. My Nana, Mom's mom, was put up for adoption upon her birth in 1934. She was in the children's home until she was adopted at three years old. Part of her adoption paperwork was her original birth certificate, which had her bio parents' names, or so we thought, and the fact that her bio mom had one other child. In the early 2000s, my mom and I stated to try to figure out who her bio family was, but didn't get far. My Nana didn't want to know anything about her family. She passed away in 2009, so she never did learn what we did. It took years of searching different databases, and my mom requesting her adoption file from the children's home, though it didn't have any names in it, for us to finally get a break. The bio dad's name on the birth certificate was true. We found out that he got married to someone else four months after my Nana was born, had two other children in the 40s, and passed away in the 50s of alcoholism. Finding the bio mom was the difficult thing. Her name on the birth certificate wasn't her true name. After we finally, finally were able to find someone born in the same town, same year, and had similar siblings as what was listed in the adoption papers, we found out her real name. We were able to connect with a person who would be my nana's niece and found more pieces to the puzzle why my nana was adopted. Bio mom married in the late 20s, had a child in the early 30s, and the family moved to California. When her child was about two, she decided she didn't want to be married anymore. Her husband came home one day to her standing on the sidewalk with all her luggage and her child. When the dad got home, she handed him their child and got into a waiting taxi. She never saw her child again. She moved to a different part of California to become an actress. She wasn't married to Bio Dad, and it sounds like Nana was an oops, so they gave her up. We found out Bio Mom got married several more times and had another child in the mid to late 40s. I believe she also died of alcoholism in the 60s or 70s. Can you guess what Nana also was? It's been sad to me since we found out what Bio Mom did. Story 21. My mother kept us away from one of her uncles her mom's brother, wouldn't let us even say hello to him at family parties he was at, wouldn't talk to him at all. We thought it was just because she didn't like him because the rest of the family was, is good with him. She never told us anything about him, just not to go near him because he was rude, which he was. We found out until recently, we are mothers now, that she did this because he molested her as a child and attempted to do the same to her older sister, but my grandpa unintentionally and unknowingly intervened. Both of them were minors, and both in that stage of puberty where it's just starting to show on girls, but they aren't quite there yet. Story 22. Going to give everyone in this story fake names since it's too confusing without them. Found out my cousin Rhea's mom, my Aunt Alice, was actually my cousin's grandma. My grandma Juanita, who my cousin and I had both been calling grandma our whole lives, was actually Rhea's great-grandma. My cousin found this out at the same time as me. She had no idea Alice wasn't actually her mom. They aren't even blood-related. Alice's husband Chuck had a daughter, Julie, before he met my Aunt Alice, and Rhea is Julie's daughter. When Rhea was born, Julie decided she couldn't take care of her and asked Chuck and Alice to raise her. Then suddenly, when Rhea was like 12, Julie decided that she wanted Rhea back, and the whole lie was exposed. All of the adults obviously knew the whole time, but my cousin and I were in the dark. It really messed up my cousin and aunt, and I haven't seen Rhea in over 20 years because I don't know how to contact her. I hope she's okay. Aunt Alice just passed away this summer. Story 23. My grandmother and grandfather met while she was a teenage at an all-girls Catholic school. How did they meet if it was an all-girls school, you ask? Well, he was 19 years old and in the seminary attached to the school training to become a priest. The wedding was a few months later. During Lent, used to be a big no-no, I'm told. So they could feasibly pretend the baby came early. They lived with my grandmother's mother, who was also involved in another deep, dark secret as well. His side of the family disowned him and forced his older brother to join the priesthood. He didn't reconnect with his siblings until his parents died. My grandmother was deeply ashamed of this, so it was only ever spoken in hushed voices until she died. Story 24. I am still not let in on it. My grandma let it slip out to me 1.5 years ago. Apparently my dad was arrested for selling drugs and went to jail for over a year. It was when my mom and him were dating, and my mom stayed. It's a huge thing that is apparently top secret. It's crazy because if you met my dad, you'd be like, no way. He made a great living for us and supported us one of the hardest working men I know. I grew up extremely privileged and he came from nothing. IDK if I'll ever tell my parents I know the truth. To be fair, it happened before I was born, so I feel like it shouldn't be my business. Also, if my dad finds out while my grandma is still alive and kicking that she told me after not telling me for 30 years, 
he'd probably never talk to her again. Story 25. My grandpa had an affair when he was married to my grandma. He and his co-workers had girlfriends in the other city they would travel to for work. They divorced some years later after that. I wasn't supposed to know. Against my better judgment, I took my grandma's phone call on my birthday. She's a miserable person and had starting to lose it cognitively. She just kind of dumped that on me. On my birthday, my parents were pissed. Story 26. My maternal grandfather had my maternal grandmother committed to an insane asylum in the 1940s because he wanted to marry a different woman. Joke's on him, though, because you can't divorce your wife while she's committed. So he married the second woman anyway, and they got run out of the state of Missouri and moved to Las Vegas, Nevada, where being a bigamist was legal. Story 27. My dad was married before my mom, which was crazy to me because she had me when she was 20 and married my dad when she was 19. When I was about nine, I found out about the first wife and found their wedding album at my grandma's after snooping around in a guest room closet. I never asked anyone until I was 16. He married his high school girlfriend, who he was with all four years of high school. My dad was 18 and did not want to get married, but felt really pressured by her family, who he was close with at the time. They separated shortly after getting married. He met my mom about five, six months after at work during that time. He told his wife he wanted a divorce again. She would not commit to signing any papers. His first mother-in-law called him saying they couldn't find their daughter and hadn't heard from her for a few days. My dad went over to the house they once shared and found her hanging in the hallway. It was very traumatic, even for my mom. There wasn't any overlap, according to everyone I've asked, even my grandma and uncles, who I know wouldn't lie to me. But my mom was work acquaintances with my dad at this point. There was a group of friends that played racquetball together. They're still friends to this day. So they were all aware of what happened. My mom did not go to her funeral. Neither of my parents can talk about it without crying, and it's been over 40 years. She is buried two spots over from my grandpa, who was ed by a drunk driver when my dad was 18. My dad never talked with me about either situation until I was in my late 30s. It was my mom that I had asked when I was 16. It's two very traumatic experiences that happened in his life, and he absolutely cannot get through a conversation about it. A few years ago, we went to visit my grandpa's grave. It was like my second or third trip there. And that's when I discovered hers and asked my mom if it was the first wife. She confirmed. It all started to make sense because someone had been putting flowers at my grandpa's grave. But his wife, my grandma, and my uncles are all gone. My dad is the only one left and it's not him. He's been to the cemetery less than I have. My mom figured it's someone in the first wife's family because her gravesite will have flowers too. Story 28. Not quite the same. But we all thought my grandma was a bit of a hoarder and that she liked, wanted a cat, and a few other minor things. Once my grandpa passed, we learned that it was all actually him. My grandma would never say a negative word about him, but it was pretty clear to us that she had a fair amount resentment towards him. The day he died, she was giving things away right and left to tidy up her house. I inherited the cat. Story 29. Grandpa had a whole second family. Wife, kids, house, cars, everything just a few towns over. Imagine making so much more money than you needed that you are able to fund two households and feed eight kids and two wives. He traveled for work he sold saw blades to wood mills. I always wonder what my life could have been like if he had been faithful. I don't really know which family came first, so I might not even exist. 1950s must have been wild. Story 30. My uncle stole his wife, my aunt, from my other uncle, which was his cousin when my other uncle worked abroad. The family was actually really, really close at the time, but this legitimately split the family apart and ruining opportunities for my mom to be better off in life, and some of them having no contact with my mom's sibling for years. Also, the thing was he was 17, and she was either late 20s or early 30s. Also, even more add up, that other uncle was dating and expected a child with my cousin, his niece back then, this is some add up that I still have no details about, but I think it's a power play by him but she was just using him for his money since he worked abroad. Thank God that baby didn't exist. Story 31. I used to spend a lot of time at my neighbor's house. I thought I was just really lucky that I got to have so many sleepovers with my friend. Turns out my mom sent me there because she didn't love me, like legitimately couldn't love me and didn't understand why. She loved my brothers and knew it was wrong to treat me the way she did. So she sent me to the neighbor's house to live while she sought help from a therapist. Story 32. Family tree assignment in seventh grade, teacher handed it to me and told me my great-grandmother, born in 1885, would be in the Guinness Book of World Records if she given birth at 57, went home and told GGM and two great aunts what teacher said. One of the great aunts got really mad. It's none of their bloody business. The other GA later secretly told me that a third GA came home and had her first out-of-wedlock baby, and my GGF wanted to put him in the stove, but they kept him. 
The other GA was mad about this possibility coming out because, even though she had given up a baby to circus tightrope walkers when she was in college, kept the second baby that the third GA came home and had all. Oh. Neither baby was ever told who their biological mother was until the deaths of the women they thought were their mothers. Story 33. When I was young, I was told my nan had an accident, which is why she couldn't read. I never questioned it. But when I was older, I learned that the reason she couldn't read was because she was never taught. The Catholic nuns that were supposed to educate her treated her like an indentured servant. And she was nursing her sick mother and raising a younger brother from 13 years old. She married Pop at 16. He was 18 and had her first child pretty early. She had such a hard life, so much harder than anyone deserves, but she was a strong and wise woman. Story 34. When I was around 10 years old, my oldest brother just stopped visiting and hanging around. He was only two years older. He lived with his dad on the same street as my grandmother and would usually stop by during the summer while we were there for summer vacations. We would spend our entire summers together and then one summer he couldn't come by for whatever reason and the next year and year after that. This went on for years until I was 24. That year, I had my license for a few years and was comfortable with making a longer trip. I had planned this for a while. I was going to pop up on my brother so he wouldn't have time to make excuses and ask why he had been avoiding his other siblings and I for years. I showed up at his house, knocked on his door, and asked if he was home. I was let in and led to his bedroom where I anxiously stood before knocking. What is it? He asked. I opened the door and a barrage of questions flew out of my mouth and before I knew it, I had started to tear up. My brother embraces me, sits me down, and spills the tea. My mom gave up custody to my brother and was ordered to take him every summer until he was 12. After he turned 12, my mother informed her mother that she no longer wanted to see him. She would call my grandmother ahead of our visit every year and would tell her to tell my brother not to show his face while she was there. My grandmother and my father were in on this as well, in order to keep us in the dark. So every year when I had my hopes up of spending time with my older brother, she was actively making sure that didn't happen. She essentially alienated him from me and the rest of his siblings. My younger sisters barely know him and just recently learned he was their brother. Now that I'm older and have the choice to associate with whom I choose, she resents me. She hates that I have a relationship with him and hates that I can clearly see how manipulative she can be. Story 35. My grandmother's boyfriend of 20 plus years is still married. I knew he lived out of state and would frequently come in for visits. I just assumed it was because all his businesses were back where he was from. On my senior beach trip, he stopped by where I was staying to give me a parking pass for his condo's beach access. And he said, well, you're 18 now. You should know I'm married. I'm down here on vacation with my family. So whatever you do, don't park near the condo. And we'll have to act like we don't know each other if we see each other. This absolutely blew my mind. The man is like a grandfather to me. We've been on tons of vacations together. My entire family has been aware of this the whole time. I'm 32 years old now, and it still is just wild to me. His wife is aware, and one of his children also knows. I guess it's just an arrangement they have. My grandma does love him, and he takes care of her financially. Story 36. Just in time for my 50th birthday, I got my life is a sitcom moment when a few weeks ago, I received a message from a half-brother I knew nothing about. Even more surprisingly, he was my mom's, given to adoption years before I was born, before she met my dad, who knew of it, as it turns out. Anyway, the whole family, except me, reacted with their trademark apathy and ignored him, making this feel even more like sitcom when the show does a factory reset and everything goes back to the way it was last week. Except for, you know, the poor guy who spent decades and thousands of dollars to find us the whole time hoping for a joyous reunion with all the love and affection he never got in his life. Story 37. I was told at 14 I had a secret sister. My mom had a baby when she was very young and her parents took the baby and raised it as their own. My mom was kicked out. Explains why I never met anyone from my mom's family ever. My mom is gone now. I never brought it up again because of the look of pure hurt on her face when she told me the first time. I just did an ancestry test a few weeks ago. I wonder if I'll ever connect with her. Story 38. I am 40. And a couple of months ago, my father revealed to me that my mother's father is not her biological father. So I probably have a biological grandfather, aunts and uncles and cousins running around that I don't know off. I have been trying to find him, them. I do have a name and birth location. But I met with privacy laws and no governmental department, not even at the local level, is allowed to even tell me if he is in their birth register or if he is still alive or not. It's a very frustrating process. I'm stuck asking in Facebook and Reddit groups with no luck. Story 39. I found out one of my uncles was questioned by the Secret Service on suspicion of involvement in a money counterfeiting operation. This was ages ago, probably the 70s or 80s. 
A couple of guys he knew went to prison, but my uncle managed to avoid charges. Whether that means he was actually innocent, or he snitched, or he just did a great job hiding his involvement no one knows or they're not telling. I was told the fakes were impressively convincing, allegedly according to the agents that visited the family house. Story 40. When I was 13, I traveled with my parents back to a family reunion. For the first time, they told me that my dad had been married before and that I had an older sister who was 12 years older than me. I had never met her or heard of her. The only reason they told me was just in case some of my relatives asked me about her or my father's first wife. That was all quite a surprise for me. Story 41. My mom always used 0610 as a password or part of it for a long time. I never questioned it since as a Gen ZR. It's normal to have a random combo of numbers you use W passwords or usernames, right? When I was in middle school, she finally told me it was my grandparents' original wedding date. They were going to marry in June, June 10th, 73, but my mom was born that September. They moved the wedding to March, so my grandmother didn't look pregnant yet. Not the most scandalous, but it's funny to me as my grandparents, especially my grandmother, no longer give AFABT other people's opinions and would find it absolutely insane if one of us did the same these days. Story 42. That my dad wanted to cheat on my mom when I was around nine. 10. She was a colleague of his at work. When he told her, she found it creepy and got her husband involved. He threatened to take it to the police, so my dad laid low. My mom wanted to divorce him as their marriage wasn't going great. But IDK what made them stick together and now things are fine, I guess? Now that I think about it, he switched jobs around the same time. I'm not sure if that's related to this fiasco. My dad doesn't know that I know this, but it's weird to think about it and even be associated with a person like him. Story 43. I'll say the one I most recently learned within the last few months. One of my mother's siblings apparently lived a portion of their childhood with a different name and surname as they were thought to be the child of the first husband. She has seven siblings, so I've never quite known nor particularly cared about their order of birth, but this sibling was the firstborn of the second husband. So when it somehow became apparent they weren't, their whole name was changed. Even my dad hadn't known this BTW. So it wasn't really that we weren't old enough, but our mom just did not think it was worth mentioning or of any interest at all. She's also made it very clear because it's so not interesting. There's to be no further questions, answers about it. Story 44. I was born in any USA, then moved south when I was 10. A year or so before moving, my grandma had a going away party for my uncle because he was moving west. Fast forward years later, my uncle got a divorce and moved a state away from my mom and I in the South. Fast forward again to 2019. My mom and I were making a trip through the state my uncle lives in. I send him a Facebook message asking if he wants to meet up despite my mom telling me not to. He reads my message but never answers so I just shrug it off. One of my aunts moved to the same state and she invited me over for Christmas last year. I go because I haven't seen her in forever and my grandma is there. We go to lunch, talk about old memories and my aunt brings up the going away party. Apparently, my mom got hammered at this party, then got in my uncle's ex's face. She was screaming that my uncle's ex was taking him away from his family, and she was nothing but a useless Jehovah's Witness. Everything finally clicked with me about why my uncle never answered me. It also explains where I get my confrontational side from when I'm drunk or mao. Not the craziest story, but I chuckle every time I tell it. Story 45 my grandmother had an older sister who was committed to a psychiatric institution when she was 16. Apart from great-grandmother and my grandmother, no family ever visited her. The two youngest sisters pretended that their older sister never existed at all. The husbands of the three younger sisters died, never knowing about the existence of this older sister-in-law. It was such a close-kept secret. We only found out because my mother was researching the family tree and found the name listed as a surviving child on great-grandmother's death certificate. Story 46. I always thought my very uncommon name was the result of my parents trying to be original or something. Turns out the plan was to give me a very normal name, but my father was late at the hospital for my birth because he was with his mistress, so my mom picked something else out of spite. Story 47. My half-brother found out he was adopted in his 30s when a great aunt's diaries were doing the rounds and recounted the whole thing, much to his shock. We knew he existed, but that was all we knew. He was keen to meet us, and I was the last one he got in touch with. He could never understand why his mom never married my dad until I told him about his alcoholism. Then things began to click into place for him, and the healing began. It was an eye-opening time for him, for sure. I think he was angry for a while. Story 48 my mom is one of four kids, the second oldest, but I was the one of the last grandkid born from her generation by a decent bit, so all my cousins are older than me. Her sister Nicole is the eldest, and growing up she more or less filled the grandparent role for me because I was the youngest in the family by decades, 
and by the time the grandparents I did have were grandparented out, I always knew Nicole went through something, but it wasn't until I was 18 that I was informed what she went through was my grandmother's brother when she was seven, while my four-year-old mom was asleep in the bed next to her. The only reason anyone believed her is because my mom, at her very young age, told everyone she saw her uncle in the bedroom that night and heard Nicole crying. Story 49. I thought I discovered a family secret. My parents always celebrated their wedding day on the 19th of August, but when I got married, I needed a special birth certificate with the wedding date of my parents. The wedding date was 18th of July, same year. I was legit confused and thought there was a secret. Turns out the office making these birth certificates copied the date wrong at my birth already, but no one noticed until now. They changed it and there went my family's secret. My family seems very boring. Story 50. I just recently found out that the sweet woman I was named after may have been hanging out at nursing homes finding rich husbands to wed Elowal. She outlived three husbands and was very well off. She also volunteered at nursing homes, spending time with the residents, and met a few of her husbands this way. She did use her gains to help anyone she could and changed a few people's lives as a result, including my family's, which is why I'm named after her. It's pretty wholesome, but I was laughing when I found out. It seems so shady for her. <laughs> Story 51 when I was old enough, I found out that my grandmother had a whole life as a singer before she settled down with my grandfather. She would toured around singing in jazz clubs in the 1940s. It was something no one really talked about. She had given it up for family and hadn't wanted to bring it up. But one day, she shared some old photos and told me the stories behind them. It totally changed how I saw her, adding this layer of complexity to her character. Have you ever uncovered something like that in your own family? Story 52 that the man I'd been calling granddad for my whole life was actually a step-granddad, and my auntie and uncle were his kids, while my dad and late uncle were born from a previous marriage. Never met my birth granddad, which is a good thing, apparently. This explains why my grandma didn't like my dad or any of us, though. Story 53. I never met my dad's grandfather, his mom's dad, and no one ever spoke about him. It's a bit of a tradition to name kids after older family members. I learned his name from my dad's sister in my late teens and thought it was pretty cool and asked why no one was named after him. She just said he wasn't a good person and she wouldn't tell me anything more about him. I tried to ask other family members, but no one wanted to talk about him. Probably 10 years later, I found out it was because he was a terrible alcoholic who was violent with his wife and daughters and he sexually abused my aunt when she was young. Story 54 On my dad's side, I have an extended family that was estranged because, to put it lightly, Grandpa was a short-tempered. For a quick example, he once called a cab and took Amtrak back home from Southwest CT to Tampa, Florida, because my grandmother looked out the window and said that my mom looked like she could use a hand with the groceries. Fifteen years after Grandpa died, I met that branch of the family. Two of my cousins are literally, not figuratively, Nazis. The guys who unironically say Hitler was right. Guess who's back to estranged? Story 55, not too sinister, but a symptom of the time for hiding babies born to unwed mothers. I was 11 at one of my aunt's weddings when a random new aunt I'd never heard of showed up. My mother just said, yeah, she's your aunt too, but never explained why I'd never heard of her before. Then it wasn't until I was about 17 that it was explained that that new aunt was actually a baby our grandmother had had before she was married. So she was raised by the great-grandparents. Oh, and also this new aunt is the actual mother of my other aunt, the one who was having the wedding when I was 11. So two generations of out-of-wedlock babies being raised by their grandparents that were not explained until we were much older, and some cousins weren't even in the know when I found out. Story 56. When I was eight years old, I found out I had two brothers because they came to live with us. They were in their teens. The story I was told was that my father had custody of them and just got sick of them and shipped them off to my mother. It wasn't until my late 30s when I found out that the reason he had custody was because he kidnapped them. She had fled an abusive relationship and he got upset that she left. He found where she was staying. I'm still not entirely clear as to why she allowed him to get away with it. She refuses to talk about it. I found out from my brothers. 